Hello, this is Akeem Milne, the Assistant Director of Cinematic Design on Assassin's Creed Shadows. And I'm Jonathan Dumont, Creative Director of Assassin's Creed Shadows. And today, we're going to take a look at our reveal trailer of Assassin's Creed Shadows. From the beginning, we really wanted to try to create this atmosphere of danger. So we're getting glimpses of our shinobi protagonist, Nawe, uh, as she chases down a target through the shadows. We want it to feel as though she has complete control over her environment and a real homage to old ninja films where we just get like little glimpses of her in the background. Not really sure what we're seeing. And finally, we get her incredible reveal here, cloaked in shadows. Nawe is from Iga. She is a farmer warrior, uh, daughter of Fujibayashi uh, Nagato. She is a capable person, let's say that. As we are going to learn in the trailer, she will be taking on a role uh, of protector. All I have ever known in my life. What we're looking at is the province of Iga, the homeland of uh, Nawe. It's isolated a little bit in, in the mountains, and they were home of the shinobi. They come from here, or at least a portion of them come from here. And the interesting thing is, once we traveled to Japan and we visited uh, this province, it came very clear how that world came together. Like, so it, it sort of isolated in the mountains, sort of kept to itself. It's a very good representation, in my opinion, of, of, of that place. Our land. Our customs. My family. Burns in the name of unification. So what we're seeing here are the troops of Oda Nobunaga. In 1579, there was a first attack from uh, Oda Nobunaga's clan, and then in uh, 1581, there was a second attack, a much more uh, violent one, where uh, Iga got crushed. And what we're seeing here is the Oda troops marching into uh, the province of Iga. Bringing split screen into the trailer was part of our attempt at formulating an homage towards a lot of Japanese media and culture. And so we try to incorporate some of that style into the game as well. It's reflecting a lot of our cutscenes and cinematics. And we thought it'd be really cool to bring that on as early as possible. And so we, we push for it in the reveal trailer as well. It allows us to kind of show off both protagonists at various points in their lives and how maybe that relationship can change over time. When we have Yasuke that turns around and says, You're still a frog in a well who knows nothing of the sea. It is a, a proverb from Japan. For us, it sort of resonates with both uh, their journey. As they open their eyes or know a little bit more, things are not necessarily as they seem. Uh, and, and that's sort of a driving force for them. That's what is going to unite Naoi and Yasuke. That's something that's bigger. The ocean's filled with new ships. So here we're in Sakai, a big port in Japan. Uh, the ships that we are seeing are a Portuguese ship. They are a, a version of the black ships or a lot of the merchant ships that were uh, coming in and out of Japan at this point. Uh, a few came to Sakai, but mostly in Nagasaki, but for uh, the sake of the trailer, it's happening in, in Sakai. Greed. The person we're seeing on screen is Oda Nobunaga. So he is known for being uh, one of the three great unifiers of Japan. A, a very polarizing character, uh, depending on which side you were. We're seeing Yasuke's first audience here with, with Oda Nobunaga, and one of the reasons why this meeting could even happen is due to Oda's deep relations with the Portuguese through trade, which resulted in him becoming quite a force to reckon with when it came to the use of Teppo. All this to say, Oda Nobunaga is an incredibly powerful figure at the time, very important to our story as well. There are a lot of speculation about um, Yasuke's arrival in Japan. The most common one is uh, that Yasuke came in a couple of years before uh, before this meeting, and he learned Japanese quite quite fast, and he was very fluent into the the Japanese culture, and it impressed Oda. So his stature, of course, impressed Oda. He was seen as super big. His skin uh, color was one thing as well. That the reports on the Chronicle of Oda say that that was the first uh, African man that Oda had ever seen. Oda asked him to stay uh, with him, and this is what. We know pretty much of the story of Yasuke. So there are a couple of elements that, that we will see also in the game that are uh, historical reports of, of his presence. But then after that, uh, there's quite a bit of an interesting uh, what if uh, with him that, that will happen. Power. Uh, the initial volley, this is a concept that we had very early on, this really cool idea of the, the initial reveal of Yasuke emerging from the gun smoke. 
to us that really ties him to Oda's battle style and as probably one of the most important people to Oda in our game specifically. And what we're seeing here is a battle between the Oda clan and another rival clan um, as a big part of the unification was taking down some of these rival clans for territory. What we see is Yasuke cutting people down with a great deal of ease. These are all moves that are going to be in the game. We specifically made sure all the choreography shown in the trailer are all taken directly from gameplay itself. Or choose another path. One of our big breakthroughs in this game is definitely this element of dynamic time, seasons, and weather. And we were kind of racking our brains with how to depict this in a, in a, in a trailer. Uh, and so one of the ways we thought about establishing their relationship was to kind of break the rules of time a lot. We're seeing them out of place a lot. They're, they're seeing each other, but that might not be literally the first time they meet or lock eyes. And what we're seeing here really is kind of a culmination of both of their journeys. Even though Yasuke has been on a journey as a fighter for Oda Nobunaga, does he think that this is the right thing to do? Now he's confronted to uh, the destruction of the province of Iga, so sort of a tying two worlds together at this point. In particular, the shot of them in the open field to us is really this moment out of time. It's them speaking to each other on a level that might not literally have ever happened, but it's really the moment that really brings them together. And just like a quick little note here for those eagle-eyed viewers, uh, you'll notice that the split screen is slightly different here, which was once again a deliberate decision we made. The other one has a bit more of a slant to it, maybe a bit more aggressive, especially if you're familiar with like anime or manga codes, comic book codes. But here, bringing it, flattening it out a little bit establishes that maybe the relationship is different. I don't want to speak too much about that, but given the time period of our game, unification is a really big deal. And I think the concept of unification can mean very different things to different people. Uh, and it definitely resonates differently for our two main characters. And we must look for it together. So what we're seeing here is that Naoi and Yasuke uh, do have allies in the world. Like every good shinobi, she has access to a network of spies and people that can help her and trade for information. And we're seeing here is somebody giving her information on the whereabout of the person that she's looking for. In the game, you can switch between both characters as you please. They do have a, a life when they're, they're not played, so they, you, when you switch back characters, you can see them do something different. Most of our black box level designs allow for both playstyles to work kind of perfectly, and you can choose the one that you prefer. If you want to go in and just be uh, full of brawn, cut people down with Yasuke, you have that option. If you want to take a sneakier option, well, you'll see what that looks like in a second. Rebuild. This is my favorite part. The wink. A big thing we were pushing for in our trailer was to really humanize our protagonists. Real emotional stakes make them feel like people you could actually see in real life, especially given that Yasuke is based off a real person. We wanted to be authentic, at least somewhat, to, to a full uh, breadth of emotions that he could portray. And follow the blade. We developed quite a bit of um, new tools for Naoi and Stealth, and one of them is the grappling hook. And the grappling hook allows you to climb over uh, walls that you cannot climb with uh, Yasuke or without the hook, uh, which opens different paths uh, for Naoi. And there's quite a bit of hook points in the game, so within every layout that you're going to see, and sometimes to come in from a different uh, entry point. So it's an integral part of their stealth arsenal, as she can navigate much faster into the uh, open world. And that's one of the big changes between uh, Yasuke Naoi, one of the key differences is her ability to take a much more vertical approach. And a lot of our locations are big castles, big ten shoes with these giant walls. And it offers her a whole new vantage point for a lot of, uh, for a lot of these missions where Yasuke doesn't have necessarily the same opportunity. Now we can fight and hold our own against a few enemies, but she's not a big brawler like Yasuke is to take on a horde of enemies, right? She is light armored and she's quick and she's agile. And that's definitely one of the key elements, uh, her, her sheer speed. She's very, very quick and extremely lethal. But as soon as she's seen, uh, the danger really rises for her. And she's got to get out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> Is destruction in the game, Joe? Do you, yeah. are, are some things breakable in our yeah, game, Yeah, shit is breakable in the game. Part of our dynamic world and the dynamism that we created for Japan 
uh, goes also in the low-level destruction. So the uh, the weapons that uh, we put a lot of little technological uh, breakthroughs uh, for our weapons, where you can destroy a large amount of uh, props in the game. You can see him plow through uh, the Suji doors. You can uh, you know destroy a full market if you wanted with the Kanabo. Obviously, the goal is still not to break everybody's stuff, <laughs> but Yasuke can do it as well as uh, now we, uh, depending on the weapons they're using. That's right. Yasuke is not the only one that can break through those shoji doors. Now I can assassinate people through them. This is a weapon that Yasuke can carry around in the game. It's called a Kenobo. It's a very heavy weapon that does a lot of damage. It's a little bit of a slower weapon compared to a Katana, for example. But it is a weapon that brings a lot of destruction as Yasuke wields it. And Yasuke is a strong man, so he is the perfect candidate to handle the Kenobo in the game. I said, who? Do you sub? We are the shadows. That served the light. The hidden blade has two functions, so it, it can come out as a regular hidden blade, like a, for stabbing people. But now we can extrude a, a, the second portion and flip it so that she has a dual wield uh, using a smaller weapon called a tanto and uh, her hidden blade at the same time. So uh, that's a very fast damaging <laughs> situation for most people that are fighting her at that time. And what Joe touched on is something that I know fans have been wanting for a long time to bring back hidden blade combat, like being able to just fight with your hidden blade. And we brought that back with the Tonto style. It's very cool, very fast. Once again, very lethal in Naoi's hands. When it came to the name of the game, that was something I remember Joe talking about, making sure we had some sort of base into the original lore. And this line was always something that really stuck out with you. We put it in the trailer as well as a, as a kind of punctuation, shadows. They are working in the shadows to serve the light. And that's, that's always been the callback we wanted to conjure with this. Paired with that is also our renewed emphasis on stealth in this game. There are a lot of new mechanics we've added. There are a lot of really interesting tools we've given Nawe. I think for fans of stealth, you're going to be extremely pleased with some of the mechanics we've added into the game. And on, a little bit on a meta level for both characters, Nawe being a shinobi, but coming from a place that is not, not necessarily poignant or, or just at the forefront of the conflict, but a little bit more uh, emerging back from the shadows and it fits with, with her and Yasuke as well coming from a, a background that's outside of Japan they are lurking in the shadows but they are doing so to protect the land this is a very interesting narrative that will flow towards something pretty positive for us uh, in the game and, and very satisfying in my opinion thank you so much for watching Assassin's Creed Shadows is out November 15th and we cannot wait to show you more